the monk should visit Lama. And that began this love relationship. Uh, there's so many circles within circles within circles, and there's so many threads uh, that Susan Rush talked about, the circles that, uh, of the circle of service. And that beginning has come full circle with Thomas and David Steinelrost speaking just two weekends ago with the Dalai Lama in dialogue. So that's one full circle that's come about. Then the beginning of contemplative outreach, actually the seed pod was planted at a 16-day retreat in August of 83, where Thomas handpicked 11 people to come on retreat down at the Lama Foundation in their intensive study center. Now the Lama Foundation, for those of you who don't know about it, is and was at that time extremely primitive. There were 12 cells in the intensive study center and Thomas was in one of them. So the 11 disciples and I was the adopted orphan because I happened to live there. Uh, were there for 16 days, cut off from all electricity, cut off from any, there was no such thing as a phone, let alone cell phones. And it was, we have no idea where the planets were at that time. And you've heard William speaking about the Nova and all the galaxies. But whatever was happening in those planets uh, brought about the formation of contemplative outreach a few years later. And one story I'd love to tell about that first retreat was we had three birthdays during that August retreat. And Carl Arico here turned 49. <laughs> Carl Shelton turned 47. David Frenette turned 26. <laughs> and the Lama Beans decided that in celebration of these birthdays, they would put on a skit called The Temptations of Anthony. <laughs> because they've been getting feedback about Thomas's stories, you know, in great detail. And so, even though I was the Lama Liaison, I had to be in this skit. So I was given, I didn't choose this, but I was given gluttony. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that was a sign of what was to come with all this cooking I've done over all the years. <laughs> so that was, that was 29 years ago. And I think that's very, very, symbolic at this time in our evolution because 29 years, if we're looking at some of the things that we've heard over the days in talk, is that Saturn return. And that's, that's a time, if you look out at that full moon, it's almost full tonight, it's a time where you either take that deep leap and um, mature, or you've got to wait a whole long time. So, that is that. Um, the 12 of us, along with uh, Thomas, were the kids. And the relationship between the, the, the Lama Foundation and St. Benedict's ended after, or it didn't end actually, it never ends, but we had one more retreat there the following year. It was another 16-day retreat, August of 84, and after that retreat, Thomas had the idea that we could do more than one retreat a year if 
he had staff at the monastery to serve retreats. So he invited David Frenet, myself, uh, Bob, there were our, our children, three of our children were, were along, Sarah and Matthew and Patrick, and Bob Bartell. So in September of 84, we moved up to the, the environs of the monastery and we started giving retreats. That year we gave three retreats for just eight people. We were running the, um, the ranch house where Carol lives. And uh, the monks graciously allowed us to rent the ranch house at a ridiculously low price. The charge for the retreats was a ridiculously low price. <laughs> it was a, an economy of money in, money out. We always had a balanced budget. <laughs> and we were self-sufficient. <laughs> uh, the following year, we did five retreats. And we asked the monks if we could rent two more places, the barn rooms and the uh, gatehouse. The gatehouse. So for a few years, we did five retreats. Now, the reason this love relationship was able to develop between contemplative outreach and the monks was we were sort of sneaky. We were, we were very slow and organic about our, our growth. And I don't think that the monks had any idea that this invasion was going to keep on growing. <laughs> so these, these circles within circles, uh, in, we were there 84 and 85, and then Mary Mursowski opened up the Thomas Merton office of, or the Contemplative Outreach office in the Thomas Merton Center half a day. And that was supported also by one of the Lama uh, One retreatants who proposed this idea to Mary. At the same time, you had things happening in Miami with the Hispanic movement and Bill Sheen. And you had things happening in New York on Long Island. You had the Butler office. So this, this whole um, uh, relationship was based on a love relationship. And um, we were part of the Butler office. So it was Chrysalis House which a year later David Finnett and Bob Bartell moved to. And, or I guess Bob didn't move to Chrysalis House, he moved to Connecticut first. But it was the beginnings of that end of it. So, the kids started growing up and uh, things are happening all over. And the kids are getting very, very creative. So uh, along comes Denver and Sister Bernadette. And the Archbishop had asked her to get something going in Denver. And in about 99, so this was probably 15 years uh, after this relationship had solidly been established and grown, um, the Colorado end of the retreat center joined forces with the Denver teaching center and um, I'm, I'm trying to think of um, Joseph's position in I think it was 95 was this old ranch house ain't going to last if this keeps happening 12 times a year. <laughs> so poor Joseph got, got shoved into a fundraiser to build a retreat center. And this 
removed us from the ranch house, the barn rooms, the schoolhouse, and the gatehouse, and the whole earth plane of the formation of the retreats that happened from 85 to 95. And when we moved up on the hill into the new retreat center, um, Mary Ann and I had met with Thomas and Raymond and Micah and, and with hypersensitivity about the impact of uh, contemplative outreach on the monastic uh, brotherhood we had suggested that they build this new retreat center as far away from the monastery as possible. Well, Abba Joseph went on Hermitage and came down and announced that the retreat center was going to be built in the most desirable place on the monastic property. <laughs> a place where the re retreatants could walk to the monastery twice a day, every day. So now we've been into uh, the brand new retreat center that you all visited today for 17 years, is it? 16, 17 years. And the lovery relationship keeps growing between contemplative outreach and the monastery. It's one that's been built on trust. It's been built on awe and respect. And it's the new retreat center allowed for the kids to start having grandkids. And there's been um, inner spiritual um, retreats held there right from the get-go. There's been AA retreats held there right from the get-go. The kids have moved up in all areas into prison ministry. And now, now at this point in our evolution, there's starting to be greats that are born, like research and development. Um, all sorts of interesting brainwave tests. Gail can attest to that. Uh, and the power of contemplation. So there's, there's no telling where the stars and the galaxies and the prayer is going to take us. But I think that um, the the thing we consistently have to remember is that this whole thing is a relationship of love. And that with that love, you, you never have any problems, there's never any worries. It, it just conquers everything. And um, that's where we are. Thank you very much, Pat. And it was really that wonderful energy that gave the rest of us the courage to have intensive retreats elsewhere around the country and in all sorts of college settings and retreat houses and everything. But the one mystery that had to be resolved uh, in the beginning was, could you be transformed if you ate meat during the retreat? <laughs> Because everyone tried to do a vegetarian meals uh, outside of the monastery in other locations and was awry. And I remember Amarillo's retreats and the ones I made in the beginning. Uh, there was a uh, uh, one of the one of the gentlemen uh, from um, who who was am I, uh, who was from um, um, Houston, Fred Eckert. Fred Eckert. Fred uh, after about the fourth day, he was tired of seeds and weeds. <laughs> and in Amarillo, we would meet secretly, but everyone saw it, went down to a greasy spoon place, had a hamburger, and we were content for about four more days. And so. But this has been wonderful, to see what started here in Lama, and uh, how it developed here, 
and also to how it continues to spread around the world. And if you haven't made an intensive retreat, I'm sure you have, it's the best way really to get the process going on a much deeper level. And I, I, w I wanted to say about one more uh, full circle is that we started at Lama, and this January, the entire Lama staff is coming to St. Benedict's to do the heartfulness retreat. And these are 13 kids who are mostly in their 20s. There might be two in their 30s, but they're mostly in their 20s. So this is another, another full circle.